Greetings, friends, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. We're so glad that we can be together in this very strange and unusual way during a very strange and unusual time. It's our desire in the few minutes that we have together during this video that we would exclaim and praise the name of God, the, that in His Son we have salvation through His death and His burial, but especially His resurrection. That in Christ we have victory, we share in life, and we are grateful to Him for His sacrifice and for His resurrection. I'd like to begin by reading from uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, as well as uh, let you know that we're going to move through some singing then, and we'll have a video testimony from Vivian Ruddick, and then we'll uh, transition to a message. So just so you know what's coming and what is ahead of us, let me pray, and then I'll read from the Gospel of Matthew. Father, we thank you that you are great and you are mighty, that according to your providence and your plan, you have made it possible for us to know that Jesus came, that he lived a sinless life, that he was buried after he was crucified on a cross, but that that grave did not hold him or keep him, but rather he was resurrected, raised from the dead by your power and your might and your authority, that over death and sin, Christ would be victorious. And so we thank you for that. We praise you for that. And we give you the glory and honor that you deserve. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb where with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Jesus is risen.
thank the Lord for the Easter season. It will always be a very special time to me because that's when I met him. The year was 1960, 60 years ago now. How time slips away. We were preparing to leave the next morning on a trip to Arkansas to visit friends. For some reason, I was afraid we'd have a wreck and I wasn't ready to meet the Lord. Quietly, I bowed my head and just prayed, God, I don't know how to talk to you, but I want you in my life. And you know, he heard me. He came in. My journey with him began that night. There was so much more to learn it, and he brought others into my life to help me. Beginning to read and study the Bible was the key. Life began to make sense. I found out that although the word Easter isn't in the concordance, I learned that it's a highlight of the entire Bible and I found it under crucifixion and resurrection. It's been 60 years and I know a lot more about him than I did. And I know him better. He has never failed me nor disappointed me. And I realize now that the very most important thing I ever did in my life was to reach out and invite him into my life that night. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've been thinking this past week, what were our enemies two months ago? What were the things that, that we were concerned about or overwhelmed us? Maybe that stirred up our anger and some significant emotions. I think some of those things may have centered around discomfort or, or things that we didn't like. Maybe it's like the person who took our parking space in the, at the grocery store. Or getting to a restaurant that we've been looking forward to, uh, enjoying a meal and, and being told those dreaded words that it's going to be 45 to 60 minutes before a table is available. I wonder how many of us would gladly wait those 60 minutes now for a table where we can enjoy a nice meal. I wonder uh, how many of us are feeling the, the threat of this imposing virus that we, that we cannot see and the concerns and fears of an overwhelmed medical system and all the ways that this enemy, this new enemy, has threatened and imposed upon our lives. But certainly there is a greater enemy in our lives, an enemy that the Bible tells us is our sin. The Bible tells us that our sin has separated us from God, that our sin has led us to God's judgment and wrath and death. That's what our sin has brought upon us and what we deserve because of our sin. But God's word also tells us of good news, God's good news, that God's greatest enemy is the same enemy that is our greatest enemy. That is... God's desire, God's good news is that he has addressed and made a plan to, to resolve the weight and the guilt and the responsibility of our sin. That's his good news. And, and we find that in this new awareness that his plan and his purpose was to send his son Jesus to live, be a man as a sinless person. And as a sinless person, he was capable and able to go to the cross and on the cross to take the weight and responsibility of our sin upon himself. And there on the cross, he, he accomplished the, the responsibility of, uh, that was ours for God's wrath. And the great news is that he was buried in a grave in a tomb. We call that Good Friday. We recognize and remember that on Good Friday. And if you would like to, you can go back and watch a video on our YouTube channel to reflect on Christ's sacrificial death. But today, in these few minutes, we want to emphasize...
the, the significance of God's salvation and his resurrection, the power and authority that Christ has over sin and death because he is risen. Now, when I say he is risen, when we're together, what typically happens is everyone resoundingly responds with, he is risen indeed. And so we're going to do that again now. We can be confident and assured that God's purpose and plan is being fulfilled for our good in the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For he is risen. He is risen. He is risen. 1 Corinthians 15 tells us in verse 55 to 57 that death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah, in chapter 25, verse 8, also said similar things. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away all tears. He will remove forever all insults and mockery against his land and people. The Lord has spoken. The drama of Jesus' crucifixion, his burial. This is a, a horrible time of heart-rending uncertainty for his disciples, for his followers, they are fearful and afraid, thinking that their teacher, their, their hope, the one that they had put their faith and trust in to be this Savior, they thought for sure that it was all for nothing because he's died. And yet God is in the midst of their fear and God is in the midst of their suffering. God is in the midst of their anxiety and worry. God is guiding and controlling the events, moving people into place to move Jesus to the cross and into the grave. But in his glorious grace, in his power, in his authority and might, God raised Jesus from the grave. He is risen. God ripped apart the stranglehold of sin on the world, and in a moment, he made death powerless. There is no crisis where God is not at work to mold it into something for the good. We find ourselves in a crisis that has stirred many emotions and fears and anxieties, but also stirred many people to great things, good deeds, acts of kindness, consideration for others. All very good things. But none of those things can confront or correct our greatest enemy. None of those things can correct the sin that is in our hearts, the sinfulness that we have come into this world with. It is necessary for us to call on, our, on Jesus as our Savior, to turn to Him, to confess our sin, to repent of our sin, and to turn in faith to Christ. To call on the God who in His purpose and plan has provided his son as a sacrifice. The one who saw him to the cross. The one who was part of placing him in a tomb. But certainly the one who has raised our Savior Jesus Christ from the dead. He is risen. So I hope that you might call on God. Praise him. Thank Him for His goodness and this good news that in His Son, Jesus Christ, we have life and hope that there is victory over sin and death. And that as we put our faith in Christ, through a, it could be a, a simple prayer, maybe even a simple prayer like the one we heard from Vivian. God, I, I don't know you. I don't know who you are. But I know I need you in my life. I would encourage you to 
talk to him about your sin and sinfulness and to confess that to him and, and ask that Christ's death would be in your place. Receive that. Stand in that. Embrace that truth. And when we believe these kinds of things in this way, we say it to God and whatever words we might choose, we say that we are welcomed into God's family as his children. We believe what God has purposed to do in this world through his son, Jesus Christ. So pray this, a simple prayer like Vivian prayed. If you'd like someone to pray with you, I would encourage you to go to our website, universityparkbaptist.com. There's a, a prayer note or a, a place to submit a prayer there. But we would be glad to contact you, to pray with you, to talk through this with you in whatever means we can make that possible. We'd also like to take some time now, knowing that this is a strange and unusual time. We have great hope in the sacrifice of Jesus for salvation, but we can also bring our prayers and requests to him. Our concerns and our fears, our, our very being, we can surrender to him. And so we've asked a few people in our church family to write out some prayers, and we'll have those read now. May this also provide an opportunity to maybe put into words some of the things that you might be feeling as well during this time. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy, for your grace upon grace that brings us to an awareness and knowledge of Jesus Christ, that we might put our faith in him as well for salvation. We praise you and we give you the glory and we trust in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. be with us in this time. Hold our hearts and souls and spirits close to you. Comfort us with your love that never fails, so that we in turn may comfort others. Remind us that things are never out of your control. 
You promise to provide for our needs. You promise to use all circumstances to mold us into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. We don't understand why, but we know you have a plan. Grow our faith and trust in you that each day we will look to you for what we need this day and entrust the future into your hands. Teach us to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances because it is your will and we want to please you. May your word comfort us and your presence fill us with your peace and hope. Hear our prayer, Lord. majestic in all the earth. We want to praise you, Father, with all our hearts. Your word encourages us to lift our eyes to you for help. Today, we are bringing to you a request from your hand to be upon our government in a time of crisis that this generation has never experienced. We pray, Father, for you to intercede on behalf of our government officials and give them wisdom in dealing with the coronavirus pandemic in our nation. May this also be a time for the people to turn to and call upon Jesus to be their Lord and Savior. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hear our prayer, Lord. of your victory over sin and death. We come to you, Lord, because of your power and authority to hold this world together. We come to you, Lord, because you come to us. We come to you with great hope and great relief because you are the God who is near. Lord, we come to you on behalf of those who are scared and confused. At the moment, we feel the most alone, the most vulnerable, the most isolated. We feel distant and alone from all we love and all we know. But we pray with confidence in the promises that you have made us, that you are close to the brokenhearted, that you are the God who heals. You are the light of the world, so come shine a light in the shadowy darkness of our uncertainty. Lord, we come to you on behalf of those who are questioning and angry. We pray that you would fill us in this moment with the certainty of your presence, that you are present in our sorrow, in our fears, in our aches. You are present in our anxious thoughts. Let us feel you near and replace fear with faith. Let us feel you near and be transformed into gentleness. Soften our hearts, melt us to you. Let us not be vulnerable to the world and its terrors, but to you, for you are most careful with us. Lord, find us in the quiet corners of this day. Let this quiet be the moment we know your mercy, for you came to seek.
Well, thank you for joining us, for spending these few minutes with us. I hope that you have uh, come to know Christ and his resurrection. I pray that this would be good news to you. Uh, thankful that we can not only sing of the resurrection, but of his sacrificial death, but that we can do so with solemnness as well as great praise and adoration of God and his purpose and plan, but also that Christ is victorious over sin and death. And that we share, when we put our faith in Christ, we share in that victory as well. May you be encouraged and strengthened. Uh, may you also be changed by God's word and the expressions of worship that we've exclaimed today. I love you. Go and be transformed.